During the Sui and Tang dynasties, China went through a particularly dynamic period of development. As the country was being integrated, there were all kinds of innovations, while different schools of thought were improved upon and their teachings disseminated. There was unity among the nation's various ethnic groups. There was great stability throughout the country, and there was peace between China and foreign countries. Confucianism, Buddhism, and Taoism all coexisted peacefully. Academic activities flourished, and literature and the arts in general developed more than ever before. It was a time of self-confidence in China, a time of inclusion and innovation. All in all, it was a brilliant era in the history of Chinese civilization. In the second century BC, during the time of the Han Dynasty, Zhang Qian, an imperial envoy sent to the outside world, visited the western regions. And afterwards, the Han Dynasty integrated the transportation routes in the western regions and connected them with routes that led to Persia and Rome. It was this that resulted in the formation of the famous Silk Road. After the Silk Road was opened, the civilizations of ancient Egypt, of the valleys of the Euphrates and Tigris rivers of India, and of course China from the Han Dynasty through to the Tang Dynasty, were linked by trade. As a result, during the Tang Dynasty, the Silk Road led to the dynamic development of cultural exchanges between China and foreign countries. According to Tang records, the Tang dynasty maintained contacts with more than 300 countries and regions across the known world, some of them regions bordering China. During the Tang dynasty, people from China's neighbors, such as Japan, Korea, India, and countries in Central Asia, as well as Iran, gathered in China. And the dynasty was also open to other civilizations from Asia and Europe. In Tang, there are many foreigners here to do. 日本人、韩国人，还有中亚的，现在属于中亚的那些五国的那地方人，都谈了做官，从文官到武官都有，啊，都是这个水种非常博大的情怀。这外来文化也是这样，唐朝有很多呢，外国的那些这个寺院，就是适合外国人的，比如说中亚的仙教啊、摩尼教啊、锦教啊等等，包括伊斯兰教，哎，他们都可以在中国建寺院，保持他们信仰。The Tang dynasty respected all foreign religions, and it was in fact during this dynasty that Christianity was introduced into China. This tablet on the development of Nestorianism in China is about how this religion of the Eastern Roman Empire developed during the Tang dynasty. Islam was introduced to the central plains of the Tang dynasty by envoys of the Arabian Empire during the reign of Emperor Gaozong. It was first introduced to the cities of Chuanzhou and Guangzhou and other coastal areas in the south by Arab business people. In China in this era, all religions coexisted peacefully, a truly rare occurrence in the world history of that time or any other. During the Tang Dynasty, China embraced the world. Its international trade far exceeded what it had been during the Han Dynasty. Its cultural exchanges with neighboring countries and other countries expanded, and it was extremely open to foreign culture. While carrying on China's fine ancient traditions, the Tang Dynasty absorbed many aspects of foreign culture, and it was an era 
in which Chinese were enthusiastic and self-confident. Chan 呃, the imperial family of the Tang dynasty had been a military family in northwest China for generations. After bringing the central plains under its control, the family hoped to promote culture there and serve as a cultural and ethical model. The imperial family regarded Lao Tzu, whose surname was Li as was theirs, as their forebear and made his religion, Taoism, the national religion. Lao Tzu advocated harmony between people and nature, and this was in accord with the policies of the first rulers of the Tang dynasty. It is also reflected in their willingness to promote harmony, flexibility and rule by virtue. As a result, Taoism, which served as the foundation of traditional Chinese culture, was quickly disseminated. Wu Zetian, who was accepting of all religions, put an end to the emphasis placed on Taoism by the first rulers of the Tang dynasty, and this greatly benefited Buddhism. As a result of her policy, Buddhism developed quickly during the Tang dynasty. Farman Temple in Fufeng County, Shanxi Province, witnessed the unprecedented development of Buddhism in the Tang dynasty. In 1987, archaeologists reopened the underground palace of Farman Temple after it had been sealed for more than 1,000 years. When they excavated a set of nesting pagodas, they found that the small innermost pagoda was made of solid gold. When the archaeologists opened the pagoda, they were surprised to find within a finger bone of Shakyamuni, the founder of Buddhism. Farman Temple was built during the period of the Eastern Han Dynasty, at which time it was known as Uyuan Temple. The temple is 1,700 years old, older than any other temple in the central Shanxi Plain. Also excavated from the underground palace of Farman Temple was this 13-piece tea set used by Tang Emperor Shizong. This noble imperial tea set suggests that drinking tea was regarded as a great luxury. China is, of course, the home of tea, but although tea was being produced well before the Tang dynasty, drinking tea didn't become common until during that dynasty. The book The Tea Ceremony was written by Lu Yu in the 8th century during the reign of Tang Emperor De Zong, and it is still widely read today. From it, we can see that the quality of life enjoyed by Chinese people improved considerably during the Tang dynasty. China is, of course, known as the home of tea, but it wasn't until the Tang dynasty that tea drinking became established social practice. At your average Tang dynasty market, pancakes, noodles and other tasty food items were on sale. Popular pastimes included polo, which had been introduced from Persia and was played by both men and women. It is hard to believe that pancakes such as these were commonly eaten during the Tang dynasty more than 1,000 years ago. These pancakes, made by people of northern tribes and known as Nang, were sold throughout the city of Chang'an during the Tang dynasty. And even today, people living in the Xinjiang Weiga Autonomous Region still call them by the same name. During the Han Dynasty, wheat was not regarded as fine food. But during the Tang Dynasty, wheat grinding techniques were introduced to China from Central Asia. And with this, the Chinese invented noodles.
当时长安有东西两个市，这两个市场的卖着，是些各地的东西。所以我们经常在唐人小说里看见，在长安的市场上啊，能发现这个宝啊，那个奇异的东西啊，那这都是当时的呃写照。At Chang'an's east and west markets, in open areas in the city and in designated theaters, Chinese and foreign artists presented operas and other types of entertainment. Many people from the western regions made their way to the territory of the Tang. Members of royal families of countries in the western regions, large numbers of envoys, and business people of northern tribes brought foreign culture into the Tang Dynasty, promoting the development of the dynasty's culture and art. Fashionable women liked to show off their unique clothing and hairstyles. A popular pastime for both men and women was polo, which had been introduced from Persia. Tang Beautiful tricolor works of art such as this one, well-rounded and beautiful, reveal the aesthetic sensibilities of the people of the Tang Dynasty. This tricolor figure of a woman sitting was excavated from a Tang tomb. The woman has black hair and a pink face, and while she seems reserved, she is also relaxed. The figure is of a rich Tang woman dressing herself and putting on makeup in front of a mirror. Tang tricolor objects, along with horses, camels, and people of northern tribes, as mentioned in Tang poems, became cultural symbols of the Tang dynasty. These tricolor figures depict a woman singing, seven males dressed in the attire of northern tribes playing musical instruments, and a camel. On the coffin in Wangjian Mausoleum are these stone sculptures of performing artists. Included are almost all the musical instruments in use in China more than a thousand years ago. Wang was the emperor of the kingdom of Qian Shu, a kingdom founded in the later years of the Tang Dynasty. According to history books, when musicians performed Qin King fighting a battle, they beat drums, played Chiltzi music, and made a truly deafening sound. The Tang Dynasty not only integrated and improved traditional Chinese music, but also absorbed aspects of ethnic minority and foreign music. In fact, among ten pieces of music frequently performed for the Tang imperial family, four were from ethnic minorities and four from foreign countries. Naturally, there was always music with dance, but the music for the famous dance of the rainbow skirt and feathered dress was composed by none other than Tang Emperor Xuanzong. The dance seeks to express the bringing together of heaven and earth and myth and reality. During the Tang Dynasty, there was always dancing in Chang'an, whether it was at the imperial palace, the residence of some rich family, or in the streets. Dance performances could be presented by a solo dancer, a dancing duo, or several hundred dancers together. Huang frescoes include many depictions of Tang dance performances. Many of these dances were clearly foreign, including, for example, the Hu Tang dance from Central Asia and a number of dances from India. Tang的社会风气是，呃，人上至皇室贵族，下至平民百姓，都非常喜欢舞蹈，而且以。会舞善舞为荣，唐代的这种嗯强大的这个非常强盛的国势，还有这种恢宏的气度，它是习拉白川，以手伸向传统，以手伸向民间，啊，有这么大量的专业的队伍的这个歌舞艺人呢，就共同
The political flexibility of the Tang dynasty helped promote social tolerance, and this led in turn to national unity and the development of culture among all the nation's ethnic groups. The Tang dynasty is commonly acknowledged as a golden age of the arts and literature. It was also a time of economic prosperity, political openness, social stability and ethnic harmony. It's said that with the right qualities and application, anyone could make their way in society. The rulers of the Tang dynasty did not discriminate against any ethnic groups. All were treated in the same way. People from minority groups held positions of great importance. They became prime ministers, generals and members of the imperial garrison. Integration reached to the highest levels. The mother of Tang, Emperor Gaozong, the mother of Emperor Taizong and his grandmother, the mother of Emperor Gaozong and the mother of Emperor Xuanzong all did not have Han surnames. People of all the nation's ethnic groups lived together in peace in the capital city, Chang'an, and their businesses flourished. Tang Taizong in dealing with the social relations is also very successful. It is a famous saying, it says, that the ancient people of China are in the same place. 读诗之如意，哎，故其种落啊，皆宜真如父母。这是什么意思呢？他的故事帝王啊，都有点大汉子主义啊，对少数民族啊，这个，呃，耐服不够。我呢，胡汉一家，我才是胡汉一家的政策，所以他们呢，呃，都非常拥戴我。那个西北各地的那些少数民族这个部落，啊，都纷纷尊。太宗为天可汗，啊，可汗呢就像在汉文里面的皇帝，那天可汗呢，实际上也就是天子的意思。To show their reverence for the Tang Dynasty, ethnic minorities in northwest China built a road leading to Chang'an and named it Khan Road in order to facilitate their pilgrimage to Chang'an. Because all ethnic groups were regarded as members of the same family, the Tang Dynasty long enjoyed peace. And its people coexisted in harmony. The integration of the Han majority and ethnic minorities promoted the development of ethnic minorities and accelerated the development of the Han people at the same time. The cultural resources of all were improved and absorbed, adding to the glory of Tang culture. As a whole, a passage in records of Tang emperors reads: On the fifth day of the eighth lunar month in the year seven hundred and fifty-five. People throughout the capital city of Chang'an sang and danced to celebrate the 70th birthday of Emperor Xuanzong. 100 horses even danced in front of Qinjiang Dian Hall in the Imperial Palace. The passage tells us that the horses danced to music known as Qingbei melody, and that when this music ended, the horses holding cups in their mouths. Knelt to wish the emperor long life. After watching the horse dance, Prime Minister Zhang Yue wrote a poem about it. But did they really have dancing horses in the Tang Dynasty? When archaeologists discovered more than a thousand Tang artifacts in October 1970. One of them was a silver kettle featuring dancing horses with cups in their mouths. The depiction on the silver kettle is in complete accord with what appears in the historical record. The positive atmosphere of the Tang Dynasty encouraged people to imagine and to create. 
It is little wonder that the Tang Dynasty is even today the one for which Chinese people display the most pride. The Tang Dynasty was also a paradise for poets such as Li Bai and Du Fu. Today, over 900 poems by Li Bai are available. His poems are full of imagination and enthusiasm, and he is even called the God of Poets. Li Bai drank a lot and was prolific, and he was highly admired by later Chinese poets. Unlike Li Bai, who was rather militant yet carefree, Du Fu, who was called the poet sage, paid great attention to the life of the people. He showed concern for people who were not properly sheltered, and even called for the building of houses for them. The Tang Dynasty lasted for less than 300 years, but it produced no less than 50,000 fine poems, all of them appearing in a complete collection of Tang poems. The 300 years of the Tang Dynasty saw several times the number of great poems written as in the 1,700 years from the Western Zhou Dynasty to the Southern and Northern Dynasties. Of the more than 2,200 authors included in a complete collection of Tang poems, about 60 were famous, many more than the total number of all China's famous poets from the Warring States period to the Southern and Northern Dynasties. The book contains probably the finest Chinese literary works of all, a truly proud legacy. All Chinese people, men and women, young and old, have been influenced by these Tang poems, regardless of their educational background. Tang Zhao is a, this, can be said, a very modern, a very modern society, a society. 呃，出现像李白呀、啊、杜甫啊这样一些伟大的诗人，也跟那个时代有关系的。所以李白能够讲出“天生我材必有用，千金散尽还复来”，这是相当啊有这个自信的一种这个一种一种一种情怀。As we look back at ancient human society, we can see that during the Tang Dynasty, Chinese were full of imagination and enthusiasm. It was an era in which everyone was doing well, an era of self-confidence. During the Tang Dynasty, people in China were able to give full play to their feelings, put their wisdom to best use, and use their creativity to the full. The most notable feature of the civilization of Tang was its willingness to treat all people as brothers and promote friendship among them. The results of this policy have continued to benefit China to the present day. <laughs>